Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 885. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth. Located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Today it's the return of the much loved feature Wow Shuts Wow. Featuring fascinating news from your automotive future. I have looked into the future and I have seen it and it's going to be like make you go Wow Shuts Wow. Because you like to call me that. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's a German term for treasure. So you like to call me treasure. And you like to call me uh, fat. Mike's Daily Podcast. I had to make that rhyme. Sorry. Uh, plus, we hear from Benita, the disgruntled little player, the brewmaster. And I work part time with this guy who never takes responsibility for his actions that cause me so much misery. He doesn't even have the decency to admit his own deficiency so he throws however many people he can uh, under the bus mike's daily podcast but he honestly believes this since he's superior to all of us mike's but what he doesn't daily realize podcast is that the rest of us are getting wise yeah repetition tends to open eyes to people who have no discretion telling lies yo drop the mic Okay, I shouldn't have done it. Look who just walked in today here at Cafe Anyway. Hi, Mike. How you all doing? Hey, you're just going to fill a player tell you what. What? I would say you just wrecked that guy the riot act. I did. I just dropped the mic and I'm done. I'm walking out. Actually, no, I'm staying here. That's wise. Just make it, make some more lyrics up. I can't. Wise, this, um... Uh, flies. Look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mac. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Brewmaster, what root beer did you make today? I made the I'm glad Mac is back. Root beer. Over. Yeah. I've been off a little bit of a while. And part of it is because I've had some issues. Uh, you've heard in past podcasts about my ear. My left ear has been clogged since my trip to Florida. I've been back over a month now. Well, almost over a month. So I have not, my ear is still, it's not clogged. I can hear out of it, but it's slightly muffled. It's kind of like, it's kind of like this sort of a sound. So I need that thing cleaned. I need it cleared out. Yeah. Dramatic organ effect. Thank you. That was so poignant. Thank you so much for helping me there. Discord fiddle player. Don't mention it. I hate organs. You do? Do you hate your inner organs? Yeah, sometimes I hate those too. Well, right now, I, I mean, I need my ears. I worry that I'm not hearing everything I need to hear. Maybe this podcast is suffering. So what I have done is I finally made an appointment with a doctor. I'm going to go in next week. I don't know what he's going to do, but he's going to do something. And hopefully he's going to clean out my ear and I'll be able to hear everything. Meanwhile, I've been training at my new job. And this new job is a uh, talk station in the San Francisco Bay Area. And it is a you have to pay extreme attention to detail, which I do. I do. If you listen to this show, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad somebody likes the the attention to detail I put into this show. At any rate, I am good. I'm perfect for this job, but there's a lot to learn. But it's fascinating. It's great. It's all stuff I want to learn. It's a whole new system, a whole new thing that this uh, radio station is using. It's great. I love it. So... I've been busy with that, and I've been neglecting my podcast. So I need to get some more guests on. I need to, you know, have you guys on the Brewmaster, Disgruntled Fiddle Player, and Benita. Mike, I don't want to be on the show. I'm shy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just want to hide. No, you should. You should not be a wallflower. You should open up. Let the world see you. See your beauty, your grace. Thanks, Mike. Do I have grace? You do, Elaine Bennis. You have grace. Thanks. I also have some flaxseed in my throat. Me too. Yeah, I gotta get a glass of water. And the water in the cafe anyway is horrible. And the root beer that the brewmaster makes is gonna poison me. You don't want a Matthews Chino? Don't make me laugh. I gotta go, bye, bye, I'm purged. Mark, that guy that you were talking about that doesn't accept responsibility, he sounds like he's a jerk. Well, you, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy. He just doesn't see. 
he doesn't see that he is wrong sometimes and that he is causing other people uh, strife with his actions and with his not uh, looking at his life, analyzing and seeing what he may be listening to when people say that he's doing something wrong. I, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. it was like fighting with someone that always wins. But then like three hours later, you go, no, wait, that person was completely wrong. They really lost because they were lying. And I guess I've said enough. At any rate, it was just uh, it's whatever. Why do people get away with that? It, I, I think it's it's not that he's a genius or anything. It's because he believes the lies he believes he's 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 built his ego up to such an extent see that's the thing this we're talking radio here egos in radio are huge maybe if i had a bigger ego i would have a more popular podcast Uh, i'd be heard in syndication i'd be hosting some horrible talent show that had judges that were uh you know um former jazz singers i don't know what is harry connick jr a former jazz singer, a Louisiana singer. I mean, he's a great pianist. Jennifer Lopez is is hot beyond words, and uh, Keith Urban has even better hair than her. So that's just the weird thing. Is I I don't know if my ego was it was bigger, and I believe my own lies. I'd have, have gone much further in this business, but that's not the case. So here I stand before you now, naked and shorn. Yeah, Mark, it's true. You don't have any hair on your head. I am shorn. I'm bald, as you can plainly see. As you can see in today's podcast picture, which we'll discuss a little bit at the end of the show. But don't forget, you can email me. Tell me what you think about people that believe their own lies, that completely don't ever hear your side of the argument. They just scream louder to drown you out. What do you think about people like that? Good arguers? Bad arguers? Do they they need to just not be uh, able to have anything to do with radio. I don't know. What do you think? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email and your calm and not so comments. Yes, you can comment there on our Twitter, which is at Mike Talks, and also on Facebook, facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. And there's also the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Go there if you want to be on the show, if you want to sponsor the show, all kinds of ways you can do that. Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy. We get a little bit of support from that. There is also the link to where to find us on iTunes. And you can rate and comment on the show in iTunes. If you do that, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. We also can be heard on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, Spreaker, Player FM, and Ameristream Live, where I was told from the wonderful Don Draper over there. Oh, wait, no, it's not Don Draper. It's Perry. He's a huge fan of Don Draper and uh, Mad Men. But he told me that this show... Got like over 600 downloads in one month, which is like a drop in the bucket compared to the other podcasts, like the ones like Serial or the ones that are going to tell you a long drawn out story using lots of mood music and no inflection in their voices at all. Why are those podcasts popular? Oh, because they teach us something, Mike. They're so they're so fascinating and they they. Grab your attention You can't leave your car Because you're listening To the podcast Yeah whatever Don't tell me You're not sick Of that style yet That serial style That This American lifestyle With the music Playing in the background Kind of like On this show Right now But that's you Playing the piano Right now Isn't it Disgruntled fiddle player Yeah and I hate Doing it Because I'm a Disgruntled piano Player too Oh Mac I am playing The lower keys Oh, it's kind of like when you play uh, Heart and Soul. That's, this song kind of sounds like Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul. Do, no, okay? Don't want to get sued. Oh, I got into a very interesting discussion with my friend Mike, who I mentioned on the last show when we were talking about Rush with Dan Menapace from the group uh, Illogistical Resource Department. And Mike was like, you know, you should be getting paid money uh, by Rush for all the Rush promotion you did in that last podcast and 
are you going to get into any trouble for playing those little pieces of Rush? And I said to him, no, I'm not, because podcasters know if you only play a, a tiny little bit of the song. Oh, my gosh. Just as I'm mentioning it, Mike is, is texting me. That's so weird and bizarre. I don't know. I can't take this. It, he says here, your green gl- glass juicer might be depression glass. I have no idea whatsoever what that means. But thank you, Mike, for chiming in. Yes, you can also tell your friends about the show through our Instagram, our Yelp, and Tumblr. Links to all those at mikesdailypodcast.com, as well as the blog and the daily podcast picture. Oh, and all my past interviews are there at mikesdailypodcast.com. And I have been busy this past week doing my morning show on my Connecticut radio station that I'm on, Wolverine Radio. A link to that can be found at mikesdailypodcast.com, which I do mornings there 6 to 10 Eastern Time. And I'm also on a country music station. I'll be on it tomorrow, Country Crossroads Radio. And a link to that can be heard at mikesdailypodcast.com. Oh, yes, that's 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Time. And I still need to um, work on that tonight. Wow, it's a busy evening here on this Friday here but now we must do this before the flaxseed takes over my throat once again wow just wow Oh, wait a minute. That was Benita that had the thing with the flax seed in her throat. Okay. That is a song by a group called uh, something. Let the, let's take the car out. Who does this? Nicholas Kragovich. K-R-G-O-Vich. Weird. All right. Anyway, imagine hopping into a self-driving sedan and reading, chatting, sending emails on your trip to the office without the need for paying another human a salary. Imagine being able to face your children and talk with them as a driverless car whisked you all to work, to school. Imagine never having to negotiate any kind of parking spot or traffic snarl up again. These are the visions behind F015, F015, the self-driving car Mercedes-Benz debuted at CES in Las Vegas earlier this year. It constitutes more of a mobile living space than a typical vehicle. According to Dieter Zeschi, the head of Mercedes, of course he is, because his name is Dieter The interior's four seats face each other instead of all facing forward. Ah, no. No thanks. Uh Uh-uh. No. I am not putting that much faith into a driverless car. I gotta at least see where we're going. I'm not gonna be in the seats facing backwards. Oh, but, Mike, you can't face each other and talk. Yeah, like, is anybody doing that now? With all our cell phones and all our smartphones? We're all sitting together? We go out to dinner, spend a bunch of money on dinner. Are we even looking at each other? No, we're looking at our stupid phones and texting people elsewhere. Ridiculous. The need for this. The interior's four seats face each other instead of all facing forward. While passengers relax inside, the car uses radar, cameras, and navigational systems to negotiate turns, traffic circles, and even pedestrian crossings. We are still a few years away from seeing self-driving cars on the road outside of Silicon Valley. And uh, it's true, I have seen a self-driving car drive by me on, uh, was it the 580, driving through Oakland. This was actually a couple years back now, I think 2011, when they were first starting to do this. It's kind of weird. But when New York finally catches up to the West Coast in that regard, Mercedes-Benz will have a luxury driverless vehicle ready. This according to the New York Observer newspaper. (laughs) 
That is the band The Hooters. And no, there were no women in the band. And yes, that's completely pointless to have a band called The Hooters if there's no women with Hooters in the band. Actually, they played an instrument called a Hooter that makes that cool little <laughs> noise. Uh, but The Hooters there, don't take my car out tonight. In the age of autonomous vehicles, driving your car could soon become illegal. Elon Musk recently suggested, this according to Forbes.com. Additionally, getting rid of the driver could also uh, remove the need for private insurance, as all the liability in case of an accident would be transferred to the car's manufacturer, the software creator, or another third party. If you think about it for a minute, if you relinquish control over what your car is doing, why should you pay for any misdemeanor? This according to Federico Guerini of Forbes. And it's not just common sense. This possibility, purely theoretical, is outlined in an essay by Yale School student Jack Boglin in the current issue of the Yale Journal of Law and Technology. Quote, If non-discretionary communicative vehicles become mandatory, as the introduction of either the interactive or remote-controlled models might require, there would be no need for private insurance since all the liability for AVs would be transferred to manufacturers. Eliminating the entire automobile insurance industry, which has roughly $200 billion in annual revenue, would be a monumental boost to administrative efficiency. And if I never have to see a Geico commercial or flow from Progressive ever again, I will be so happy. I just made a total Eddie Vedder face when I said that. You're just going to have to imagine it. Theater of the mind. And imagine that there's a bunch of people here around me talking, because we're at cafe anyway, and the disgruntled fiddle player playing the piano. Like I said, I hate doing it. Right, because you're disgruntled. For insurance companies, that might be a catastrophe, at least for a while, as they struggle to adjust, but they could soon find other revenue streams like signing deals with manufacturers. Ah. The chance of having passengers' full attention during a drive would also create a huge amount of possibilities of monetization for advertisers and content providers. Hi, I'm a content provider that eats flaxseed while recording my show. On the customer side, not having to pay for an insurance could prove an irresistible bait for cash-strapped car owners, helping them overcome all their fears related to the further erosion of privacy that could take place if driverless, connected, and remotely controlled vehicles become mainstream. Well, we'll see what happens, you know, because that's what's going to happen in the future. And it's not happening right now, because I'm sure there's a lot of people who have the same irrational fear that I have, that computers are just going to turn into uh, Terminator Four, whatever the one is with Christian Bale and you know drive us all off cliffs and then they'll have the world all to themselves oh I love the Hooters so much I love Hooters they're delicious chicken wings they're wonderful hot orange pants shorts they're plunging neckline white t-shirts and push up bras oh and the band's pretty good too Yeah, you know, and they were the guys that play behind Cindy Lauper on that song, Time After Time. Th- that, that guy that was singing just then, he sings backup vocals with Cindy Lauper. Yes, I'm full of trivial knowledge as we go outside of Cafe Anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast, located somewhere here at the last place on earth in Podcastro Valley. And here's today's podcast picture. Driverless cars is also the topic of today's podcast picture and our Cafe Anyway cartoon. With none other than this man right here, John Deere, the engineer. That's right, Mike. Driverless cars are wonderful. They're the future. Nothing can go wrong. Nothing? Absolutely nothing. You're worrying completely for no reason whatsoever. Okay. All right, John Deere. I'll just have a little faith in you and other engineers. Yes, please. Do that. By the way, you don't want to live much longer, do you? I do want to live lo- much longer. Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't factor that in. 
I gotta go. All right, there he goes. He's walking off into the parking lot. He's uh, oh, he just fell into the pool that I didn't know that we had. Oh, I hope he doesn't have his left ear clog up like mine. It's not fun. That's not easy being green or disgruntled. That's right, Mark. I should be more positive. Work on that. I will. And Mark, I'm gonna work on not eating so much flaxseed. That's great, Benita. And Mark, I'm going to try to make my root beer less poisonous so people like Benita can drink it. I'm in love with Shelly Shuhart. That's still going on? Yeah, we're still very much in love. So are we. Scrum Philip and I are in love. Yeah, we're in love. Okay, stop. Both of you. All of you. Stop. Mark, it almost sounded like my voice is your voice there for a second. Ah, uh, you're on something. Yeah, I'm high on life. That's the attitude you need to have. Huh, oh, it's working. This show made me positive. That's one good thing about it. Maybe we can get some more downloads. Next month, maybe more than 600. Maybe 7 billion. I hate playing that organ. Next show, it's going to be a special, wonderful guest. An interesting guest. Um, A person, human being. Interesting and wonderful. On the Much Love segment, into an interview. Plus, we'll hear from Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.